AMD CPUs are getting into a tricky price situation, so are Intel's GPUs. GPT-4 is here to blow your mind even more, and Nvidia has got some wackiness going on with the 40 series launch. Oh boy, let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Wednesday, March 15th, 2023. And we're gonna start off talking about the 7900X, which is a 12 core CPU that AMD sells, and it launched at $549. But what we're seeing is that the prices are dropping everywhere, even for this chip even more. With WCCF Tech reporting that this chip is down to $420 in China, which makes it cheaper than the 7900. But it's not just in China that we're seeing this pricing setup happen. This is a significant price drop of $130 in less than six months since the CPU launched. Obviously, there's more demand for the X3D version of this chip, the 7950X3D, or potentially even the upcoming 7800X3D, which is going to be a little bit more at $449. But it's even interesting that it's dropping below the non-X counterpart. Seems like people are buying the non-X version pretty decently, especially because those are the more efficient models because they have a lower TDP. The 7900X would be capable of doing that as well. So finding it at a cheaper price is just really intriguing. It's a better processor selling for less money than the lower tier version. And it's it's happening in China and it's almost happening here in the US. So if we go over on Amazon, what we can find is that the 7900X is $433.68. The 7900 is only $429. So that is a difference of $4.68 between these two chips. You're getting a much better experience out of the 7900X. And both of these do come with the Jedi Survivor game. So it it's a really peculiar situation that AMD's found themselves in with their CPUs. This lineup, this launch has confused me tremendously. I thought their prices were too high. They've continuously dropped them, which kind of vindicates some of that feeling that I had, as well as what you guys have expressed in the comments. And then now that the non-X versions have launched, people pick them up if they want power efficiency. And now that the X3D versions are launching, people aren't picking up the Xs because they want to wait for the 7800X3D. And it just it feels like there was a listless strategy for AMD for this generation. They weren't quite clear on what they were supposed to do. They kind of put themselves in a very difficult situation when they announced that the 7000 series was getting an X3D setup and then priced the non X3Ds at roughly the same price as what the X3Ds are going to cost. It's a, I don't, I don't understand what they were trying to get out of it, but let me know. Does the 7900X dropping to this low price entice you to pick it up? Are you waiting for the 7800X3D because you don't need those 12 cores? Sound off down below while I tell you about today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Morgan & Morgan. Now, I fortunately have never been in a serious car accident myself, but I know friends and family members who have. I have a distinct memory of being a child and being in a courtroom with my dad for an accident where he was hit by a distracted driver. And the thought of having to go through all of that just seems overwhelming, but not with Morgan & Morgan. They've modernized the injury law process so you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer without ever having to leave the couch. You can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor bills all from your phone. You can even text message your attorney and case manager without having to go into an office. When you're injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things that you should do. And with Morgan & Morgan, submitting a claim is so easy. More than 3 million people have trusted Morgan & Morgan when they were injured in an accident. And if you're ever in an accident, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. You can submit a claim in eight clicks or less, and you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at forthepeople.com forward slash UFD or dial pound law. That's pound 529 from your cell. Big thanks again to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring today's video. But it's not just AMD who's getting CPU price drops. Intel's getting CPU price drops, again, this time only in China because the CPU is only available in China, the Black Edition 13490F, which is essentially the i5 13400F that we have here in the United States and the rest of the world, except for it has more L3 cache, more gaming cache, as AMD calls it, more actual fast gaming performance, and it's cheaper than the 13400F, and now it's even getting a price drop to help make it competitive with AMD's new CPUs, which are also getting price drops, so the 13490F is getting dropped down to two. 
$1,200. I wish we could have them, but we can't. But what we can have is price drops on Intel's GPUs because it's being found that they're just at record low prices. Whether you want the A380 coming in at $120, which makes it the cheapest AV1 encoding GPU on the market. You can find that on Newegg in case you want. It's at its lowest price that we've ever seen it at. The ARC A750 eight gigabyte version is down to $229. That is an incredible deal for the current mainstream lineup of cards. If you told me that this card was gonna be $229 back in 2019 when we had the 10 series and the 20 series launching, I would have been upset by that. But now I just have to deal with reality as it is. But the A770 eight gigabyte version, which not a lot of people wanna purchase because the 16 gigabyte version exists, is at a great price of $270. All of them are at significantly reduced price. Intel coming out with a great GPU. All of them do happen to be the ASRock version, but very affordable affordable on Intel's side. Hopefully this means that more people pick it up, more people get to enjoy Intel inside and that they continue to produce the Battle Mage and Celestial GPUs that might be coming out later. And what's coming up right now is hopefully Reese with UFD deals. He didn't do it yesterday, understandably because power randomly got shut off to his house. It was not load shedding. It was just, he woke up with no power, which just South Africa thinks. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. I couldn't do deals yesterday because I didn't have power for the entire morning. It wasn't even load shedding, it was just power brokey. Hopefully today's deals can make up for that because we have some steep discounts starting with the SteelSeries Prime Mini Wireless. This little gaming mouse features a battery life of over 100 hours and it's going for only $64.99 which is $65 off. But next up we have the ePost GSP370 which is a fantastic wireless gaming headset going for only $99.99 which is $100 off. And then lastly we have something we don't usually feature here but if it's a really good deal I'm definitely going to put it in. If you have not played this game yet now's a great time. Seriously. We have a steep code for Batman Arkham Knight Premium Edition going for only $4.79 which is $35.20 off. So I know the game's a little bit old at this point but honestly it's a fantastic game and if you like Batman or DC anything just $4. Almost $5. Do it. But those are the deals for today. You can find those linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Thank you, Reese. But you know what's just Brett things? That was a segue before UFD deals, in case he did record a segment, then you probably forgot. Anyways, a PCI Express add-on card that has 21 SSDs. This feels right up my alley. I'd slap this thing into a PlayStation 5 or a Steam Deck so fast if they ever sent me one. Apex Storage, you wanna you wanna work on a video with the X21? I'll be, I'll be down. This thing can host 21 SSDs, which you might be looking at this thing and being like, okay, I see that there's five on the front and then there's an additional six on the back. Brett, that's only 11 SSDs. Well, it has another connector board that you stack on top of it, which then hosts the other 10 SSDs. This thing is a dual with full slot PCI Express card that can get up to full PCI Express 4.0 speed. So you're looking at roughly 32 gigabytes per second of transfer speed, but you do need two six pin power connectors to power it because of all of that SSD juice, but it can support up to 168 terabytes on a single card because of eight terabyte SSDs being slapped on there. This is just a wild, wild thing. I would love to potentially slap that in a system somewhere. And I've been talking with Kyler lately. You remember this, Kyler? Remember what? I've been really wanting a foldable phone. Fold it. And I think I found the one that I'm gonna want because the Pixel 7a, what? Which one? <laughs> because the Pixel 7a and the 7 Fold are being rumored to release in June. I'm looking at the Pixel Fold, buddy. What? Pixel Fold. What? Pixels don't fold. They're gonna. In June, they're gonna. No word on how much it's gonna cost. I'm really hoping that it's gonna come in less than the Z Fold and potentially just give you the basics of a Google Pixel device, especially with the Google Pixel 8 launching later this year. I'm hoping that this thing is gonna be like 700 to 800 bucks. That would be great. I, I'm not banking on it, but I could potentially see that happening. And Google's banking on AI, generative AI, being put in their Google Docs, Google Gmail, all of that kind of stuff, with them announcing all of the features that AI can help you do in Gmail, in meetings, in campaigns, showing off a lot of pictures. They're really saying that's gonna help you draft, reply, summarize, and prioritize your Gmail, brainstorm, proofread, write, and rewrite in Docs. Bring your creative vision to life with auto-generated images, audio, and video, and slides. Go from raw data to insights and 
and analysis via autocompletion, formula generation, and contextual categorization in sheets. Generate new backgrounds and capture notes and meets and enable workflows for getting things done in chat, which one of the things that this Ars Technica writer remarks about is that Google Assistant can't even like cancel an alarm 90% of the time. So the fact that it can just in Google Meet write down literally what everybody's saying at the same time, not not seeming like it's a relevant future. However, one of the reasons why Google is probably announcing this is because Microsoft's gonna be implementing their AI into Microsoft 365 upcoming. And so they wanted to get the announcement out. But even though their Bard AI launch kind of flopped and hasn't really hit any sort of mainstream use while more and more people are using Bing and Microsoft Edge because of the AI features, which there's gonna be more of them because GPT-4 just got announced. Yeah, you thought we were on GPT-3, Technically, some of them were on 3.5, but they're saying that GPT-4 has human level performance on professional benchmarks. With OpenAI saying that it potentially represents the opening of a new era in artificial intelligence, it passed the bar exam with a score in the top 10% of test takers in contrast to GPT-3.5, which was in the bottom 10%, even if it did pass it. GPT-4 is gonna be available to people on a wait list of currently available to subscribers of ChatGPT+, in case you want to embark upon that. OpenAI said that they've spent six months iteratively aligning GPT-4 using lessons from their adversarial testing program as well as ChatGPT, resulting in their best ever results on factuality, steerability, and refusing to go outside of guardrails. And on top of that, it can receive image inputs as well as text, allowing that to help feed some data. And they're saying that GPT-4 hallucinates at a lower rate. 40% less of the time it gets things wrong. And the new model is 82% less likely to respond to requests for disallowed content. So no more GPT Dan. We did a short on that, which you can watch right up there. And with that announcement of GPT-4, Microsoft confirmed that they've actually been running on this version ever since that they've enabled it in Bing and all the stuff that they're doing. And so Microsoft's likely not getting an increase from GPT-4, but they'll likely go on to GPT-4.5 or five behind the scenes without letting you know, which helps to explain why the AI on Microsoft stuff has been so good because it's using the version that wasn't publicly available until now. And NVIDIA is making their new drivers available publicly with the one that actually fixes the CPU bug that caused 10% performance loss. It wasn't a hot fix to the driver that it was affecting 531.18, but now the new driver that you wanna to update to is 531.29, which will allow you to have that CPU bug resolved and you don't have to depend on a hot fix. But now you're gonna to have to depend on the benevolence of NVIDIA when it comes to the RTX 4070 launching. This is a really intriguing strategy that NVIDIA is going with because they're separating out which cards you're gonna be allowed to know about before launch. This is part of a trend that NVIDIA has been doing as of the last few cycles. We've seen it all the way from the GTX 10 series. NVIDIA seems to want to take more of the money directly from the consumer. And so they create scenarios by which they disadvantage the third party companies because they want more of that market share for founders editions. And so we talked about in yesterday's episode of Hot News that we're likely to get these GPUs on April 13th. Video Cards has published a more descriptive launch plan for these GPUs. And what you'll see is that this card will get announced on April 12th at 6 a.m. Pacific with MSRP reviews being launched at the same time. However, non MSRP cards are only gonna have their reviews published the following day. And these cards are gonna hit the shelves at the same time as the review embargo for the non MSRP cards. Now it stands to reason that the RTX 4070 would get a founder's edition because even though the 4070 Ti didn't get one, that's because it was an offshoot of the 4080 16 gig. They weren't gonna launch two Founders Editions for the same model, but we're expecting the Founders Edition to be the MSRP variety. So this means that the Founders Edition and other third-party cards that are cheaper are going to get the reviews, but you're not gonna be able to find out just how fast the non-MSRP cards, the ones that are overclocked like the ROG Strix, until the time that you can actually buy them. So you might not be able to get your hands on one if the price point is something that you actually are willing to spend because if you're an informed customer, you're not gonna buy it until you know details about it, which you're not gonna get until they go on sale, at which point you're gonna be beat by the people who have more money than the desire to wait around and find out how good it actually is because they'll find out for themselves. It's a new strategy that NVIDIA is embarking upon going for price rather than Founders Edition versus third-party cards. They're potentially making it so that their Founders Editions cards get more coverage than all of these other more expensive varieties because they're the ones that come out first 
first of the ones that people are gonna watch as they're rolling out, and then anything more expensive is pushed to the side. Potentially, I don't know, conspiracy theory time, looking at NVIDIA maybe dropping overclocked Founders Editions in the future. There's nothing really to substantiate that besides a whole lot of distrust in NVIDIA's plan to not screw over their third-party customers. Let me know if you would like that idea. Let me know if you hate it. I wanna hear from you down below in the comments. Are you happy about the split between MSRP and non-MSRP embargo times? Would you prefer that they're all put together? Do you like the deprioritization of the more expensive GPUs? I wanna hear from you down below. And you'll hear back from me more for hot news tomorrow.